Okay, whenever you're ready. Okay. Yeah, uh, my name is Samir Verma. I'm a professor at San Francisco State. Uh, I teach right here. Uh, I also have a, a few different projects uh, that I work with, and uh, we have the uh, local old BC San Francisco chapter here that meets here once a month. So uh, a lot of things happen in this particular space around the projects. Um, so I've got three projects, or, or several projects in three different areas. I've got uh, one project in India that I work with directly. I've got three projects in Jamaica. I've got one, one project in Madagascar that I've been working with. And then I've been supporting a few others uh, in, in, in a whole bunch of different places. So it's been interesting. Cool. And uh, what's new this year? Um, so yeah, the, the summit seems to um, sort of change its flavor every year. Um, there is a level of maturity, uh, there are newer problems. So if we sort of look at the hardware side of it, there, there's new hardware. So, you know, it's faster, but then there are new issues. Uh, but there are also new challenges. Uh, people are not able to get machines anymore. So it's kind of hard to get computers in small batches. So if you have a project that, um, you know, needs 20, 25 excels, how do I get those? That seems to be a big issue. Uh, so on the community side, people are struggling with that. They are trying to maintain older uh, projects still running on X01s. So the X01 now is, uh, what, five, five and a half, six years old, somewhere in that range. And we still have these out there, right? So people are still trying to support those. But on the other hand, you've got things coming in, like the X04, uh, which will have a touch screen, or at least some one of the models will have touch. So it's sort of a spectrum of issues there. Uh, and then there are changes within the OPC itself. I mean, uh, today we heard on the panel uh, and the session before that that there is the OPC Foundation that's moving in a direction with their reading project. They're trying to figure out, you know, completely illiterate communities. How do they learn? On the other hand, you've got the OPC Association that's still working with the XO laptop design and going off into schools and, um, you know, even here in the U.S. in Miami and North Carolina and so on. So. I think on the corporate side, the story is changing. It's uh, uh, it's growing in different directions. Uh, on the support side, with volunteers, there are challenges. So we're hearing a lot of those dialogue, uh, you know, dialogues coming out here uh, as to where do we go next. So I think that's primarily the main thing that, that I'm seeing here at the summit. And of course, we have the usual, you know, updates on projects. Uh, people have cool uh, um, hacks. Last year we saw a telescope. Uh, this year we have a magnifying glass, you know, you can look at a dollar bill and see what's written on it and those kinds of things. So, you know, we see the usual stuff, you see like posters like these uh, describing projects. So, so that's there, but I think the main thing has been this, this sort of a metamorphosis of the project, both on the corporate side and the community side. Cool. And then in your perfect future, where would you like to see OPC go? <laughs> perfect future. Um, I think if I had to pick one thing over the next year uh, to put energy behind, uh, we need to solve this issue of, we have, we have volunteers, we have people who are willing to go out there and do all this stuff because they like it, they love it, um, they, they, they really want to support this cause, uh, whether it is you know, for the love of hardware or software or to actually do this for the kids, there needs to be a way to support that. So, so we have people who cannot afford or do not require a thousand laptops, uh, but they need 25. How do we address that? So it's almost like we have, it's either too big or it's too small and nothing fits in the middle. And so we have to solve that issue. And so if I had to solve one thing, uh, that's the thing I would like to solve, which is all these people out there who want to do small projects, how do they get their hands on uh, computers to be able to then take it to deployments? It's a logistics issue, it's a funding issue, it's a line of credit issue, it's a warehousing issue. But there needs to be a solution around that. Right? If that is not solved, then we have a problem in that the volunteers will then essentially have nothing to do. I mean, if you have no laptops, then what are you going to do in this project? Right? So if you don't solve that, then this community then has nothing to do and it might actually wither away. So I think that's, that's a big concern, and that is something that needs to be addressed. Um, is it, do you have like any advice or direction for someone wanting to start you know, an organization that would do that? Um, 
So, so th I think there needs to be an organization in that space which can interface with the the volunteer community side of it. Um, I mean, we do the summit here uh, because we are able to host people in the space and people like to come here and talk about their projects and issues. So we need an organization that can interface with that. But on the other end, it, can, it should also be able to interface with somebody and say, uh, let's say we have you know, 10 projects in India that want 100 laptops each. Can somebody there gather 1,000 laptops and then redistribute? And this is nothing new. I mean, you know, we've had resellers for forever. Right? Any business has got value-added resellers and those kinds of things. So warehousing and redistributing and that kind of stuff is not new. The, I think the, the trouble here is, like I'm, I'm in this project because of a personal interest. But I am not a value-added reseller by profession. Right? So it would be hard for me to drop everything I do and then go become a value-added reseller. And the same thing applies to most of the other people here. So people who know how to do this, correctly, properly, should fill that space, create an organization, you know, that, that can uh, warehouse machines, have a line of credit, buy computers, maybe with a three month lag or something like that, right? But fill that space. And if we do that, I think not only will we be able to do things like the summit, um, which we do every year, but also be able to help people out with smaller projects because then you know that that small project that begins with 25 laptops will actually grow into, you know, 100, 200, 500, and so on. I mean, that's kind of what we did in Jamaica. Very small project, uh, uh, you know, two different schools, but we have something to show. We have something that we can take to the Ministry of Education and say, look, this is what we did, and these are the results. And so they now, now they want more. That becomes a stepping stone. So that, that is the role I think this organization should play. Cool. And then personally, over the years, um, if you yourself today, with the wisdom you have today, could have gone back to yourself when you were first starting on this adventure, mm -hmm. what advice would you have told yourself? Um, hmm, boy, that was five years ago. Uh, in fact, you know, if I knew of all these things that are going on in this project and the complexities and the issues and all that stuff, I probably would not have stepped in it, right? Because uh, it's just one of those things where you're stepping into something you don't know, and that's how you get sucked into it. So in some ways that was good. Uh, but the things I would have done differently would be that perhaps I would have gone back to look at some more success stories uh, with the angle of sustainability, a project that can go several years, right? Uh, some good funding models, some good uh, business models, you know, revenue uh, versus expenses, uh, some uh, ways in which the communities can take ownership. In so many ways, we sort of stumble upon these things as we go. Um, so I probably would have done a little more homework on some of these things if I knew where this was headed. But then, you know, the ad hoc nature of the project was just a joy to be with, and uh, not knowing where this is going is part of the pleasure. It's like you're sort of, in a sense, making it up as you go, because this is uncharted territory. I mean, nobody's done these kinds of things before. And it's wonderful. I mean, it's amazing when you, when you see a kid in a small village, like I have a project in India, and uh, with close to zero training, uh, we haven't done any training to, for these kids. Uh, they figure out, uh, figure out all of it, everything in sugar. You know, they, they 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 know how to use the calculator, the Wikipedia activity. They know how to use Scratch. Um, there was an anecdote where they don't use the record activity to actually record a video because they figured out that they could turn to Scratch and use the record within Scratch. Nobody told them. They figured it out, and that's how they use. Scratch, so it's it's great to see all of that stuff. Um, so in so many ways, you know, it kind of panned out the way uh, it should have. Maybe a little bit more homework, but no regrets. Absolutely. Cool. Excellent.